Hey brothers, hey sisters, this is Adam with the Parable of the Vineyard YouTube channel. I pray you are doing well, and I pray that your mind and your soul, your spirit is focused on Jesus Christ and salvation through him and through him alone. Belief in him, belief in his blood and his atonement and what it does for us. Not by anything we can do of our own works, but only salvation through him. I know I've been talking quite a bit about doing good works and being the light and being the salt of the earth but so there's no confusion again we are saved by Jesus Christ alone and what his blood does for us belief in him belief in the blood is what it's all about today I want to talk about the the general unbelief or or the lack of desire to learn about this Revelation 12 sign and there seems to be this just this general kind of you know here we go again kind of attitude or Ugh, I'm tired of hearing of this I'm tired of false prophecies I'm tired of uh, date setters I'm tired of uh, this tired of that and what's interesting is there's some parallels that we find in the book of Acts I brought this up a few videos ago but I wanted to bring it up again and kind of zone in on it but in the book of Acts we see Peter and the other apostles uh, that were standing trial before the Sanhedrin and a, uh, a Pharisee named Gamaliel um, he, uh, he actually um, brings up how there were several false Christs before Jesus and uh, you know had I guess had shown wonders and gathered bunches of people and um, they were killed and and the followers dispersed and that happened with uh, with two different individuals and so you know, I feel like there's a there was a spirit of you know, kind of here we go again. Here's here's this Jesus guy, and uh, he's claiming to be the Christ, and kind of oh yeah, here we go again. We we already heard about those other two, but um, I want to read uh, some of Acts five to you, and kind of where they are is Peter and some of the apostles had done uh, many mighty works. They were healing people. They were preaching in the name of Jesus. And uh, this is when the Sanhedrin had uh, had told them to stop preaching in this name, and they actually threw him in jail. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna start reading where they're in jail, and uh, let's. I want to read it first, and then I kind of want to dissect it a little bit, and then I kind of want to, you know, shadow or, or show how that reflects in our today's world, and how there's just kind of a, a general unbelief or or just a you know here we go again attitude, or, or like I've said before the cry wolf scenario so let's take a look at acts 5 start at verse 18 and again this is where the um the pharisees and sadducees were confronting peter and the apostles so at verse 18 and laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison but the angel of the lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said go stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life and when they heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning and taught. But the high priest came, and they that were with him, and called the council together, and all the senate of the children of Israel, and sent to prison to have them brought. But when the officers came and found them not in prison, they returned and told, saying, The prison truly we found shut with all safety, and the keeper standing without before the doors. But when we had opened, we found no man within. Now when the high priest and the captain of the temple and the chief priest heard these things, they doubted of them whereunto this would grow. Verse 25. Then came one and told them, saying, Behold, the men whom ye put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then went the captain with the, with the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people, lest they should have been stoned. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, Did we not straightly command you that you should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses of these things. And so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. 
When they heard that, they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them. Then stood there up one in the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law, had in reputation among all the people and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space. Now listen to this. And he said unto them, Ye men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what ye intend to do as touching these men. Before these days rose up Thutis, boasting himself to be somebody, to whom a number of men, about four hundred, joined themselves, who was slain, and all, as many as obeyed him, were scattered and brought to naught. After this man rose up Judas of Galilee, in the days of the taxing, and drew away much people after him. He also perished, and all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men, and let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it, lest happily ye be found even to fight against God. And to him they agreed, and when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded them that they should not speak in the name of Jesus, and let them go. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple and in every house they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. So what we see here is that Gamaliel explained how there were several false Christs before Jesus came. And as I explained last time, you know, it there's not a there's not a lot of information about it, so it leaves it up to the reader to I guess kind of try to figure out what was going on, but obviously these men who was it Thutis and Ju uh, Judas of Galilee they claimed to be someone great and gathered a lot of followers. Maybe they were able to do some mighty works. Maybe they weren't. I don't know. But either way, they got many people to follow them, and uh, they were killed and their followers, you know, dispersed. So, where I'm going with this is, you know, the way he explained it was kind of like, well, you know, here we go again. And I wonder if that was the part of the reason there was a general disbelief or there's quite a few that didn't believe that, that Jesus was uh, the Messiah. You know, this could have been part of it. it there could have been a, a attitude of, you know, here we go again, and just a, you know, kind of an unbelieving spirit or unbelieving heart. And so my question is, you know, are we seeing the same thing here today? You know, this is the possible return of Jesus Christ. What we're talking about with the Revelation 12 sign, you know, this could be the possible return. And so I wonder if Satan had an influence in this and maybe possibly raised up these men, uh, again, Thutis and Judas of Galilee, to maybe show some works and to gather people and so that it would be kind of known across the land. And so once finally Jesus came, you know, were people saying, oh, you know, here we go again. You know, this is going to be a third time that, you know, the Messiah came because everybody kind of had an idea that, you know, that the Messiah could be coming. And so here we are today, you know, most Christians, most Christians would agree that we're in the end times. Some people think it's, you know, coming this September. Some people think that, you know, we're seven years away. Some people think we're 20 years away. But I think most Christians would agree that this, this sounds like the time, you know, this feels like the time. What we read in, in general in the book of Revelation, as we see the beast system, you know, kind of rising and taking its form, and we see the Antichrist, you know, just, it's ready. He's ready to be revealed on the scene. We may know who he is right now, we may not, but it doesn't matter. Um, you know, our focus, our eyes are not on waiting for the Antichrist. Our eyes, our hearts, our spirits are waited, waiting on Jesus Christ to return. So my point is, is I wonder if Satan had some influence here and, you know, either guided these false prophecies, you know, uh, whether it be Harold Camping, whether it be the 88, 1988 uh, prophecy, whether it be all the prophecies throughout the years, whether it was uh, the Y2K nonsense, whether it was um, the Cold War or the, the Mayan calendar expiring, the 2012 ordeal. You know, so to set the general populace in kind of a, you know, we're so used to, we're conditioned to see a prophecy and now at this point kind of just say Ugh, whatever you know and even most recently um which actually perked my ears up and uh i started you know telling people that you know the time is here 
So that's why a lot of my own family members won't listen to me now is because with the 2014, 2015 blood moons and, and then Jonathan Kahn and the Shemitah and all those type of things. So I kind of cried wolf as well. But, you know, looking back in hindsight, that was just the forerunner. That was the that was the fulfillment of Joel that, you know, the sun shall be turned into blood and, and the moon shall not give its light before that great day. So, but my point is, is that you know, most people are kind of just turned off to the even the possibility that this could be the time because of that general disbelief, the, oh, here we go again. And as I mentioned in the last video, I mean, that was the very opening line to a well-known pastor who was, who was talking about this. His very opening line was, here we go again. You know, so I wonder, you know, I feel like I see a, I see a parallel here. Um, you know, I'm, I'm curious to see what you guys think if, if you see some parallels here, but Again, just you know, kind of that cry wolf scenario. It's ha the the wolf apparently has has been coming so many times that now that we actually truly see it, most people won't even listen to it. So, I uh, you know my question to you, or my overall point: Where is your heart? Is it is it focused on the daily cares of this life? Because Jesus Himself said, you know, to not be found not watching and, and to be consumed with the cares of this world and so my warning to you is if you if your mind is just constantly focused on the cares of this world and you're not looking for the return of Christ you know it's not me it's him telling you so that's a warning to you and if you are watching amen and if you're watching this is what you see so if you, brother or sister, have the, the spirit of unbelief in, within you, you know, I, maybe this is the time to, to take some time and research this out. I don't think, I personally don't think you've got to believe that this is the sign to be, to be saved and to be partakers in the blessed hope. So, you know, if you believe with all your heart and all your mind and all your soul that Jesus Christ, that his blood that his precious blood that was spilt for us is our atonement, then you're saved. You're saved. That's it. And that's what it takes. But what a blessing this is to actually see, because he told us to watch. He wouldn't tell us to watch and then us not be able to see his return. Those that are watching, they see this. And as I've tried, and as I've mentioned in several videos, I've tried to dismiss this. I've tried to debunk this. Can't be done. Can't. Again, less happily you find yourself fighting against God. So, to those that preach against this sign and call us this and that, I, well, I pray for you. Because it's one thing to believe in Christ and to have faith in Him and salvation through Him and to not believe this sign and just go about your day. But it's another thing to preach against this. I, I, that's a warning to you. From the bottom of my heart. That's a warning. To preach against this without proper investigation. I warn you. As of today, July 12th. We've got 40 days until the Great American Eclipse. And 73 days until the fulfillment of of the Revelation 12 sign. What follows, we will see. Personally, I'm hoping for the blessed hope, but concretely that this is the sign. This is the sign we are told to look for. What timeline, what happens this day, what that, I, I, I'm not going to get into. All I know is that this is a sign. This is the sign of Revelation 12. Concretely, I believe that. If you're still hung up on this has happened before or is not particular or specific or this is not, nothing special, please, I, I, I invite you to take a look at my attempt to debunk this with all the supposed previous dates. Hasn't happened. There's, this is so precise. It's, it's only, I mean, I can only see it coming from God. It's so precise. It's uncanny. You have to literally strain at a gnat and swallow a camel to try to disprove this. 
by saying, you know, well, I don't even want to get into it, but I feel bad for the big name pastors, you know, that I don't know really of any big name pastors that have any kind of really following or, you know, viewer base that has been talking about this. The only ones I've seen have tried to debunk this. And unfortunately, the attempts are pretty sad. But it just shows. It shows that there's a as a blind there's a blindness, just like the the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They knew Scripture better than anybody. They should have known that that was the Christ, that that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. But for whatever reason, pride, blindness, I don't know. I feel bad. All I can think of is those are the ones that are going to say, "Lord, Lord, open to us." Do we not prophesy in thy name? In thy name do many great works. I don't know. I don't want to cast that on anybody. But we shall see. Brother and sister, I, I pray that um, I pray that this blessed you. If it did, please share it. And um, at the end of the day, like I said before, belief in this sign is not necessary for salvation. The only way to find that is through the accepting of the blood atonement of Jesus Christ. And there's a big difference between accepting atonement and asking for salvation. I will leave a link for a video that Robert Breaker did. And I thank you, my brother in Christ, Matthew, who shared this with me. I do like Robert Breaker's videos, but just haven't had a lot of time to, to really watch a whole lot these days. But I'm glad that I watched that because there is a huge difference by what we believe is you know asking Jesus Jesus into our heart as opposed to believing and having faith in the atonement of his blood that's where the power is so I will leave a link for it and I think it's titled asking versus accepting salvation by Robert Breaker be blessed and all eyes to Jesus Christ our King of Kings and Lord of Lords amen <laughs>